यू मे लूज यूर पेशंट टू ए फेटल पॉइजन और ड्रग ओवर डोज इफ यू डोंट नो इट्स एंटीडोट एंड दीज आर नॉट द रेयर टेक्स्ट बुक पॉइजन बट दीज आर द ड्रग्स एंड द टॉक्सिन्स दैट वी फेस डेली इन द इमरजेंसीज हाय I am Dr. Saurav, and in today's video, we will revise the common antidotes that are used in the clinical practice. Before starting this video, I would like to tell you that if you have come for the first time on this channel, then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical insights. So, friends, let's start the video. So, the first antidote in our list is naloxone, and it is used when there is opioid toxicity. and it is especially used when there is respiratory depression this drug is an opioid antagonist and it acts within minutes and the dose of this drug is 0.4 to 1 mg iv and this dose can be repeated if there is no response and important thing uh, to be remember here is that you have to watch for the recurrence of respiratory depression especially in the case of opioids that are long acting because the duration of action of naloxone is very short and this drug is available in the market in the form of a 1 ml ampule which contains 0.4 mg of drug and it is also available as a 10 ml vial and in this 10 ml the drug is 4 mg so this is all about naloxone now the second antidote in our list is n acetyl cysteine and it is used when there is paracetamol toxicity Paracetamol is the most commonly overdose drug in the world and this N acetyl cysteine helps in paracetamol toxicity by preventing the liver injury because it restores the glutathione levels and this drug is especially useful when it is used within 8 hours of ingestion of poison and during the treatment of paracetamol toxicity we used something called as nomogram as i have already told you that effect of the n acetyl cysteine is very good if it is used within 8 hours of ingestion of poison so if there is a history of ingestion of paracetamol we need not wait for the lft levels and depending upon the concentration of paracetamol in the blood we can start the treatment on the x axis of nomogram uh, there is number of hours after the ingestion of poison and on the y axis there is blood paracetamol concentration if the blood paracetamol concentration at given hour is above this red line then we should immediately start the treatment and this n acetyl cysteine is available in the market as a 2 ml ampule or as a 5 ml ampule and in each of this ampule the concentration of drug is 200 mg of drug per ml now the third antidote in our list is the one that is daily used in rural and the semi urban areas of india and it is atropine and it is used in the treatment of organophosphorus poison this drug acts by blocking the muscarinic effect of poison what are these muscarinic effects they are like salivation then bradycardia and bronchorrhea the dose of this drug is 1 2 3 mg iv and this dose can be repeated every 5 to 10 minutes and every time when this drug is repeated the dose is doubled and it is continued till the this is important till the lungs are dry and the heart rate is more than 80 This atropine is available in the market as a 1 ml ampule but while treating the organophosphorus poison we have to use this 100 ml of vial because during treating organophosphorus poison a large amount of atropine is needed 
and this 100 ml oil is very useful and important thing here is that while treating organophosphorus poisoning we also have to use oxymes which are also the antidotes against the organophosphorus poisoning and the fourth antidote in our list is vitamin k and this drug is used when there is increased INR and or bleeding in a patient who is on warfarin. Means this vitamin K is used in warfarin overdose or warfarin toxicity. These warfarin like compounds are also present in certain poisons that are used to kill the rodents and in those poisons, if those poisons are consumed by the patient, there can be bleeding and in those cases also this vitamin K can be used. So how this vitamin K helps in warfarin toxicity? Warfarin acts by inhibiting the vitamin K dependent coagulation factors and they are 2, 7, 9, 10. When we give vitamin K, this mechanism of warfarin is bypassed and these coagulation factors are restored and the bleeding is controlled. When there is only increased in INR and no bleeding, this vitamin K can be given orally. But if there is a bleeding, this drug has to be given intravenous. And when there is serious bleeding, then sometimes we have to use fresh frozen plasma or prothrombin complex concentrate. And this vitamin K is available in the market as a 1 ml ampule and it contains 10 mg of drug or it is also available as a 0.5 ml ampule and it contains 1 mg of drug. And lastly, we see often a overlooked drug that is glucose. And this is used when there is hypoglycemia in a patient who is on oral hypoglycemic agent, especially the long acting like sulfonyl ureas. And also when there is increased dose of insulin. When there is hypoglycemia, this glucose is given in the form of 50 ml of 50% dextrose or 100 ml of 25% dextrose. And always remember to check the RBS after giving this drug. Because if sometimes the hypoglycemia is not corrected, you may have to repeat the dose. So this drug is available as 100 ml vial 25% dextrose and also 100 ml vial of 50% dextrose. So in summary, naloxone is the antidote that is used in opioid toxicity or opioid overdose. N-acetylcysteine is used when there is paracetamol overdose or paracetamol toxicity. Atropine is used in organophosphorus poisoning. Vitamin K is used in warfarin overdose or warfarin toxicity and glucose is used in hypoglycemia caused by oral hypoglycemic agents or insulin. So friends, that's all for today. These antidotes are not rare. They are common, life-saving and you have to know them well. Keep these drugs at your fingertips, especially if you are working in ER, ICU or in ruler setups. If you find today's video helpful, give it a like, share with your friends and subscribe this channel for more such clinical insights. See you in the next video. Thank you.